Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace and salutations, as always, to the elect. And I wanted to deal, all right, with the uh, deliverance of Enoch, all right, which we know um, when you go into the, the volume of the book, you know, through the Rahakwadash, the Holy Spirit, all right, um, we get a very, very clear picture, you know, of uh, ultimately uh, what happened with Enoch as we know he's known as a preacher of righteousness, okay? And he had a testimony that pleased, all right, the Most High God, Yahweh, okay? Now, as you go uh, here in uh, Wisdom of Solomon, okay, the uh, fourth chapter and the 10th verse, speaking of Enoch, and we'll show you, he pleased God, all right, and was beloved of him. See? Now, beloved in the Hebrew is Dawada, which is David. Okay? And we know that the house of David, all right, are going to be the focal point of deliverance. Okay? Right. It says, and was beloved of him, so that living amongst sinners, he was translated. Okay? So Enoch, all right, was the first recorded to be what? Translated, beamed up into a cherry okay and it, and, it, and it and it says that what he was what amongst sinners you see and when we read these stories of our forefathers all right we have to spiritually connect it all right to our situations who we are because these are our forefathers okay if you don't understand who enoch is when you go to genesis genesis the fifth chapter all right, you have the lineage, all right, of, okay, Adam through Seth, which through Seth, the priesthood, all right, the preaching of the word, the prophesying, the calling on the name of the Lord, all right, was continued because Abel was slew, okay? And it tells you when, when uh, uh, Seth had a son, okay? Genesis 4 and 26, and to Seth, to him, there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Okay, so the preaching, the legacy of righteousness, all right, will be continued through this lineage. And Enoch was, is within that lineage when you get Genesis, the fifth chapter. All right, because as we showed you before, okay, the legacy of Cain, the lineage of Cain was forwarded. All right. And it gives you a record of it in the fourth chapter. But at the very end, it tells you Adam had another son who was Seth because Cain slew Abel. And then men to begin to call upon the name of the Lord through his son Enos, which he who, who taught him that his father, Seth. Who did he learn that from? Adam. OK, so as you read down in this lineage, OK, and we're not going to go all through it. OK, but um, when you go to uh, Genesis chapter uh, five, verse 18, and Jared lived a hundred and sixty and two years and he begot Enoch. All right. Now, as you read about Enoch. All right. Jump into verse 24 and it says, and Enoch walked with the most high and he was not for God took him. Now, when you read it in the NLT, it says walking in close fellowship with God. Right, because the Heavenly Father opened up to him. He was one of the sons of God. Okay? And just like the times we're in, okay, uh, the, you know, because the sons of God eventually became Israelites, all right, through one of the descendants of the sons of God, through Noah, through Arphaxad, through Eber, Peleg, all the way up to Terah, who had Abraham, okay, who uh, had Isaac and Jacob. And that's how you have the 12 tribes. We're directly linked to Adam through Seth. And amongst that lineage, you have Enoch. Okay, which Enoch, okay, it means what? Uh, a, a learned man. Okay, dedicated. Okay, that's where you get the uh, the uh, Hebrew word, Chanach. Okay, he walked with the Most High. The Lord was dealing with him. He was dedicated 
to the ways of righteousness, learned in the ways of righteousness. He was a he was a disciple, disciplined in the ways of righteousness. Okay? So walking in close fellowship with God, then one day he disappeared because God took him. Okay? So this is the first record that we have of any of our forefathers being beamed up. Okay? And when you go into the book of uh, Hebrews, you get more insight. Okay? Let's get the book of uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. All right? And as you read this chapter, notice it's going through Okay, uh, the, 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 the lineage of the sons of God. Okay? <laughs> it starts with uh, uh, Abel. Okay, and then it goes to Enoch. Particular figures, all right, that are, that are points of righteousness and faith that we can look to, that we have recorded. Okay? So, right here, jumping to Enoch in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, Again, this is tracking the chosen lineage, our forefathers. That's why this book is called the Hebrews. We are Hebrew Israelites. Okay? Hebrew is a language, but it's also a legacy. That's why Abram was called the Hebrew, because he ultimately continued the legacy of righteousness that was passed down through Adam that we fell from. And from that point, we all fell, all right? But the Lord left remnants in particular men to do what was right so that we could have this platform noah was a, was one as well and through his righteousness okay we 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 were able to have a seed to survive the flood the seed of it was directly through adam through seth okay so hebrews 11 and 5 by faith enoch was translated okay that he should not see death. What does that mean? And he was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So before he was translated, he had a testimony. All right. Now the scriptures talks about in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, that the elect were going to overcome the beast Esau and his system and his devices. By the blood of Yahweh Shai, which was shed for them to overcome, all right, and be entered into the new covenant and, 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 and swallow up death. So they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. See? Now, what happens after we receive, uh, uh, after we preach this word? Well, let's get it real quick. Pursuing the Revelation 11. Okay, Revelation the eleventh chapter. Revelation eleven, and uh, let's go to uh, eleven. And after three days and a half, after we were in a dead state, all right, that you know, serving hardcore slavery, we were dry bones, as you read earlier in the chapter. Their dead bodies lied in the street of the great city. Okay, that's that same valley full of dry bones that Ezekiel saw. But after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. Okay, so from around 1619 to, to uh, the 1960s, 350 years, we were in a dead state, but that was the end of us being in that dead state because the Lord was sending the Holy Spirit, Rahakwadash, through men being raised up on earth, starting with John the Baptist, okay, Elijah himself, okay, which is Enoch, because Elijah was also beamed up into a chariot, okay, now, when you read here, and he, and he came back and preached, and was at the forefront of what we have today, okay, and we believe through faith that was Abba Bivens, because the Lord said, in the book of Malachi, the fourth chapter, I will send you Elijah before that great and dreadful day. So he had to be somewhere. And again, he's at the forefront of the preaching of the coming of Yahweh Shai. Without him, <laughs> we ain't in our lot. He had to come. But that's for those who have ears to hear. Okay, only the true church can accept that. 
but that's written in the scriptures that he would come and prophesy. You see? Now, what happens next after we stand up on our feet, which standing up on our feet is receiving the word, prophesying, repenting, the same thing you see, and people are scared. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying to them, come up hither, okay? And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. There you go. So we, all right, seek to be in the lot of our forefather, okay, uh, 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 Enoch, all right? As we're disciples now, uh, 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 dedicated, learned men in a way of righteousness through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai, through the Holy Spirit, Rachach Wadash, okay? Hebrews 11 and 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because he had God have translated him. All right. And before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now let's read it in NLT. It was by faith Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. There you go. And we want to be known as those who are pleasing the most high. God, Yahweh through Yahweh Shai in, in this time. Okay? Now, another thing to take into account as we're getting ready to go back to the Apocrypha, Jude gives you insight on Enoch as well as he's speaking against evildoers amongst the church. Because as Noah saw the sons of God in a wicked and evil state, so did Enoch generations before him. Okay? So it, it, the, the, the book tells you, Jude tells you, all right, in verse 14, and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying, behold, the Lord cometh with tens of thousands of his saints. So even Enoch was prophesying the, the, the destruction of Babylon the Great, the return of Yahweh Shai. It was always known that one was going to come and restore the righteous lineage and race back to, to back to their fullness, man. It was always talked about. Even back then, and the heathen took the, the stories of the sons of God and made their own versions. Okay? So it says, Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord coming with <coughs> thousands of saints to execute judgment and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed in all of their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So you had people doing wickedness back then, and he was out preaching, telling the sons of God who, who, who were going off, you know, to, 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 to turn back to the Lord, prophesying the coming of the chariots, the same thing we're doing. Now, this is seven generations from Adam that this is happening. Okay? And we're here to continue that legacy. Okay? The, 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 the seventh generation after Adam prophesied about these people that the Lord is going to destroy the two-thirds, even back then, and the coming of the, of the, of the chariots. You see? And he talked about their hard speeches against him. So you had men coming up against Enoch. The same thing you see happening now is the same thing going on amongst the true prophets. Okay? It's just what it is. Okay? And it's also important to take into account that Cain's lineage was in the earth in this time. So that's going to bring to light what we're getting ready to read in Wisdom of Solomon. Cain's lineage was in the earth. Right? When you read Genesis 4, boom, what do you read to the right at the top? The descendants of Cain. So Cain had a, a son and he called his name Enoch. 
Okay, so there's two Enochs in the scriptures. You have the Enoch that was through Cain and you have the Enoch that was through Seth. Okay, which is the line where the righteous would come through. But the, 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 there you go. So if you count seven generations, okay, Enoch, I mean, you know, count seven, uh, you know, I mean, when you look, I mean, pretty much you got two ball Cain, who was the first to create weapons, okay, or he became an expert, okay, he became an expert at it, the first to, to, to use metals and, and make uh, weapons to, to, to harm people, that's what they were doing, so when you look at the narrative, when you look at through the spirit, Cain, as we just did a lesson, if you haven't watched it, I did it a couple of, like last week, going into Cain, linking him to Esau. Cain and them, Cain and them was doing the same thing Esau's doing now. Turning humanity backwards, murdering, taking peace from the earth. And then you had Enoch, who was preaching. So what was he saved from? Let's get it. Because it, it clearly tells you he got beamed up. Right? Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 10. He pleased God and was beloved of him so that living amongst sinners, he was translated. I'm going to read it through and then I'm going to go to the GNT. Yea, speedily was he taken away, lest that wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. You see that? <laughs> For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. And the wandering of concupiscence, freaky nature, the, the the of the flesh, all right, doth undermine the simple mind, which that's what we see happening in this world. Okay, people, the souls are being destroyed. It was so bad back then, whatever was happening. Okay, and you could put it together through the Holy Spirit if if you're tying that which is now is that which is then. And you go into the, the, I did a video going into the, some research that was going, that was done on the family line of Cain. And they were murderers. They took men backwards. They took men in a way, all right, that, that was, that was just far beyond what was normal and natural. And in that, pretty much if the Lord left Enoch in whatever situation he was in, he would have been defiled. If we're left in this situation and Esau gets the victory, we we lose. So the Lord had to save him out of that situation. For being made perfect in a short time, fulfilled a long time, for his soul pleased the Lord, therefore he hasted to take him away from the wicked. Cain, which was known as what? That wicked one. So the family line of Cain was 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 doing the same damn thing Esau's doing now and we're doing the same thing that Enoch was doing and we hope for the same uh uh uh, uh you know result being beamed up into those chariots okay let me let me go to the GNT to read that very same those very same scriptures and then I'll close it out example of Enoch Okay, this is the good news translation. Now we go to these different translations to bring out certain scriptures because the old English can sometimes be hard to understand. But the King James is the best translation as far as from the Greek to the Hebrew. I mean, from the Greek and Hebrew into the English, it's the best translation. All right, however, there's points in the King James that need to be corrected and goes off as well. Easter is in there. When you look it up, it's really the Passover. And Sirach, the book of Sirach tells you that when the words of Hebrew are spoken in their original form, they have more power than when they're translated into another language. So we do go into the Hebrew to give you particular words, but sometimes the old English, which the King James was written in, and King James didn't write the Bible. He had 70 scholars come together and translate 
the uh, 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 the the Bible, the scrolls from the Hebrew and the Greek. Okay, to the old English, thou sayest, thou doest. If you're right, that's why it sounds like that. So sometimes we go to these different translations, which they go off. Right, that's why one who is spiritually discerned goes into these things and teaches it. Okay, so it says here the example of Enoch. Once there was a man named Enoch who pleased God and God loved him. Okay, while Enoch was still living among sinners, God took him away so that evil and falsehood cannot corrupt his mind and soul. We all know that people can be fascinated by evil and they cannot recognize what is good even when they are looking right at it. And that's the type of wickedness that Esau got going on that you, you don't even think is wicked. Even though you're, you're, doing, you're, you're doing the evil, you don't even, you, you, we've been so desensitized to what is right. Okay, and that type of energy was going on. This is the falling away of the sons of God. The falling away, the Nephilim, the fallen ones, okay, were, 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 were supposed to be trained in the ways of righteousness, man. But through the enticement of sin, the fruit, all right, the, 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 the fruit of evil, man, all right, tasting of that fruit, taking in that philosophy, Jake got beguiled, right? So, the Lord had to take Enoch from, from that situation because he would have got destroyed. See, the same thing with us. If Just imagine if we stay here and our children stay here forever. And this is it till we in our 80s. Like, come on, man. We wouldn't even, it wouldn't even, it's not even something to even think about. Why did they even say that? 80, that's too goddamn long. It's a lock you. But imagine five years from now, 10 years from now. And, Esau, he's so wicked, Claw Swab will start reversing in age. He'll get younger. <laughs> It'll be all kind of weirdo stuff. The wicked will never lose. Robots that turn into liquid. You'd be like, what the hell? Robot strippers. A new meat. You'd be like, hey, nah, nah. Hell nah. So the Lord is going to have to get us out of here, man. That's the point. The Lord is going to get us out of here. Because just as he got Enoch out of there, he ain't going to allow us to, 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 to fester in this evil for much longer, man. That's why things are turning up in the spirit. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 and 12. We all know that people can be so fascinated by evil that they cannot recognize what is good even when they are looking right at it. And that's what happened to Eve. You see, and when you when you when you go into the knowledge of the, the 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 tree of good and evil, it pleased. It was the scriptures say it was good for taste. That's why the scriptures say, "Taste not, touch not." Okay, taste not, touch not. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's get a. Colossians 2 and 21, touch not, taste not, handle not, which is these different doctrines. Yep. Uh, Isaiah 52 and 11, depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing, go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17, wherefore come out from among them <coughs> and be ye separate saith the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you now when you go to the book of uh, let's see here yep boom Genesis 3 and, and 3 but the fruit of the tree which is in the knowledge which is a garden which is in the midst of the garden God has said ye should not eat of it and that's a philosophy 
neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So neither sh you should not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. See? And, and lest ye die. So that's what was happening with the sons of God. The church. Eve did literally go off. But again, it tells you in Ephesians that, right, that's that's symbolic of Adam and Eve is also symbolic of Yahweh Shah and the church, which the church are the sons of God. OK, who was supposed to follow in a ways of righteousness, but they got beguiled. All right. By this, 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 this philosophy, which when you read six, it says and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye so it was good to, it tasted good all right but it wasn't good for you in spirit and pleasant to the eyes and a tree desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband okay so going back here and we'll finish it off wisdom of solomon 4 and 10 once there was a man named enoch who pleased god and God loved him while Enoch was still living among sinners. God took him away so that evil and falsehood cannot corrupt his mind and soul. See? We all know that people can be fascinated by evil, that they cannot recognize what is good even when they are looking right at it. That's what this, this deception of the serpent brought. Innocent people can be so corrupted with desire that they can think of nothing but what they want and what did eve say it was good to eat it was good to 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 taste it was desire to make you wise better than the, the, the knowledge that the lord gave you and see that's what people take the philosophies of esau as this image of the beast it's really low level man okay so it says this man Enoch achieved in a few years time a perfection that other people could never attain in a complete lifetime okay the Lord was pleased with Enoch's life and quickly took him out of the wicked world people were aware of his departure but didn't understand <laughs> all right they never seemed to learn <coughs> the lesson that God is kind and merciful to his own people he protects those he have chosen Boom. So we can, you, you already know. Wisdom of Solomon 5. I already know y'all thinking of Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. Okay. <laughs> See? And then it immediately, as you, you, you can keep reading down, but then it goes to what? The, 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 the righteous standing in great boldness before the faces have afflicted him, preaching, prophesying, people being troubled with fear. All right. But when they see what? Let's keep reading. Verse 2. Let's start at uh, 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled and shall fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. And that's what's coming for us, Lord willing, if we have that number. It's coming for somebody. Okay? But that elect, or, 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 or tech, they're going to be in the spirit, they're going to be likened unto Enoch in that day. Because the Lord is going to take them away from the filth, okay, that this world is is uh, promoting, man. Because if he doesn't, how are we going to make it? Sirach 44 and 16, Enoch pleased the Lord and was translated being an example of repentance to all generations, man. All right. And what did John the Baptist preach? Repentance. And through uh, 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 in the book of Malachi, through Elijah, would be the final admonition, the final admonishment before the day cometh that burneth as an oven, man. So hopefully I'll edify it on to the next. Shalom.